Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'm taking on the difficult task of putting the Sardajet 5000B RP head-to-head -head against the Developers GTI Pro Lite. Now, the Pro Lite is also known as the Techno Pro Lite in the USA. They're just about identical guns, however, the only real difference is that in the US, they've got a black body on it, and they don't have any air valve on the bottom like the GTI do. However, all the tips and air caps are exactly the same, and they will spray exactly the same. As you can see, I like to run an air regulator on the base of my guns anyway, so I don't even use that air valve that they supply on the GTI. As the name suggests, it is a professional gun. Easy to use for beginners. I believe this gun is a little bit easier to set up and it puts a tad less pain on so you can go that little bit slower. The price tag on the Pro Light is definitely an improvement on the Sada 5000. So if money is a issue when buying a spray gun, which I guess it is an issue when buying ev anything really, um, you are getting a top quality gun for a reasonable price. You can get some really good deals on eBay USA for the Tecna Pro Lite. Uh, you can get TE10, TE20 air caps, 1.2, 1.3 and 1.4 mil fluid tips with a digital gauge regulator that sits on the base of the gun like you see on mine for around $430 to $500. So the price definitely is beaten on the Pro Light. Versatility of the gun and replacement parts is definitely also won by the Pro Light. So you can buy an extra air cap for around $100 Australian and any needle setups and fluid tip setups are easily purchased at a reasonable price. By going from the TE10 air cap to the TE20 and the HV30 on the Pro Light, you can turn this gun from a low volume, low pressure to a conventional to a HVLP spray gun to suit the conditions you're spraying in, paint type and desired finish. I've heard a few people say that this gun has had some air baffle issues. Now I'm not sure if that's either an Iwata or Sada rep trying to badmouth the competition's name because I've never had any issues at all with this gun not spraying. They're easily cleaned, easily pulled apart and lots of my best work has been done with this spray gun in my hand. I've barely got a bad word to say about them. Don't forget that this is a 100% independent review. I'm not getting anything from either developers or SATA to say their guns are good or bad. If you're looking at getting a GTI Pro Lite, I'll give you a quick rundown of the air caps and their conditions that you would want to be using different setups in. So the TA20 is ideal for medium solids clears, high solids clears, and just about any environment, base coats, clear coats, wet on wet primers, this air cap will handle just about anything. The HV30 is the high volume, low pressure air cap, which is probably better suited to high solids clears, but not medium solids clears, because it probably puts a little bit too much air out and you will get too much fluid on with an MS clear. The TE10 air cap is the low volume, low pressure setup and that is more suited to medium solids paints. Whereas the HV30 and the TE20 will get a bit of a thicker orange peel. I find the TE20 perfect for most situations because just through setup of the gun and application, you'll just about be able to get anything from the European right the way through to the Japanese style finishes. Also a good setup to use with direct gloss 2k and base coats so you can see the finish here is uh pretty top class uh you can't get a great deal better than that other than the fact that i got a few silicon holes open up in this uh hard lid here that you can see now unfortunately i found a bit of a hole in our booth and there was a guy outside doing some sanding work a few bits of dust must have flown into our booth and opened up a few of those little silicon holes so I ended up deciding that the amount of time and effort I would spend polishing would be just about quicker to flow coat the entire hard lid there. There was one or two spots that I did cut through so I put a bit of base coat up there and next up we'll be on to clear coat using the SATAJET 5000B RP. It's got the digital gauge inside the handle there and it's got a 1.3mm fluid tip on it. So straight away you can see that this gun has really got a massive fan on it. I find this gun does pump out a little bit more paint than the Pro Lite so that can be good or bad. 
I would recommend this gun only really to a professional. If you're a DIYer, backyarder, even an apprentice, I would probably say the Pro Light is more suited to you. First time I used this gun, I'm not gonna lie, I got runs because I was used to my Pro Light. Although I will say I was instantly in love with this gun and the way it sprayed. After being a little bit let down by the Sider Jet 4000s, as soon as I got the 5000, I was very impressed with what they came up with in the 5000 and they've definitely made big improvements on the way it sprays. So the price is definitely uh, a little bit overpriced, I believe. If you look on eBay Australia, they're trying to sell some of these for $1,200, which to be honest, a spray gun just isn't worth that much to me. So I managed to find this one from Italy, it cost me about $780, which still is quite expensive, considering it only comes with the one fluid tip and one air cap, no regulator. They also sting you on replacement parts. I thought that maybe the 1.2mm setup would have been better suited to me after I mentioned at the start of using this gun, I've got a couple of runs with it. Now, I looked into getting a 1.2mm fluid tip, they wanted around 300 Australian dollars just for a spare fluid tip. Now that is a bit of a joke to me. You'll be able to buy a spare fluid tip for the Pro Light for under $100. The reason I chose the RP over the HVLP is because of its versatility. Again, it is a conventional air cap, so you will be able to replicate both the European and Japanese finishes a little bit easier with it. Now I find it does put a hell of a lot of paint on, so you may have to wind that fluid in if you were to try and get a Japanese finish with it. Also, thin the paint down a touch, move a bit quicker, and just put a little bit less material on. But in the situation I'm in, I would just simply change over to the Pro Light and use the gun to suit the finish that I'm looking for. The starter jet now has the top spot in my gun collection. If I'm doing flow coating, I'm gonna be using this SATA. If I'm doing a job that I want to get the absolute flattest, then I'm gonna be using this SATA. I find you get a little bit less orange peel, but again, that's down to the user and you can get really top quality results with the Pro Light. One of the only real downfalls I've found about the SATA jet and the way that they've designed it is the fan adjustment there. You may have noticed when I was painting, my thumb just naturally wants to rest where that fan adjustment is. So if you adjust that back a bit, you'll find that your thumb actually moves it. I know I'm not the only one who has that problem too. To get around that, all I do is just leave that fan wound wide open and this gun does spray well on full fan. There usually isn't much of a need to close that fan up. It did take me a few uh, shots at it to fine tune the settings on this gun. I was probably using a little bit low pressure at the start. Um, I was using say around one bar, but I found when flow coating and looking for the absolute top quality finish with this gun, you're even better going up say around 1.2 to 1.3 bar for a flat panel like this. If I'm doing a side panel, I'll up that pressure even to 1.4 bar. I do apologize about some of the footage on this second coat. The camera isn't 100% focused in on my hand. It's a little bit tricky to know exactly where the camera is going to be pointing. But I decided the footage was good enough. So after painting this panel the second time, wouldn't you know it, a bug decided to come and land in it. So if you'd like to have a bit of a lull, go and check out that footage on my second channel, The Gunman Raw. There's links to that page in my description to the videos and also my Facebook pages. So closing thoughts on the Defilbus GTI Pro Light versus the Sata Jet 5000B RP. Well, I have not got a absolute standout winner, but the Sata Jet wins on absolute dead flat finish. The Pro Light definitely wins on versatility and price. I'm glad I own both of these guns and I doubt I will be selling either of them in a hurry. Sata Jet, beautiful German engineering and developers being the pioneers of spray gun technology with the first invented in 1907 by Thomas developers. They have over a hundred years research and development in the spray gun. If you're like me and you just love spray guns, well, I recommend getting one of each and 
Give me your opinion on it. Be sure to let me know what you thought of this review in the comment below. Give it a thumbs up if you've liked what you see. Be sure to check out my website, thegunman.net.au. I do my best to do blogs and put pics up there all the time. Also on my Facebook pages, quite popular over there, and on Instagram. Now if you've watched this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production.